vessels to be replaced. So I submit. Thank you. Dr. Zhang Chengtai. At noon time, the observatory uh, issued a particular notice. We are going to have a special um, phenomenon uh, tomorrow. There will be the uh, meteoric uh, rain. But then as a result of the light pollution, I don't think we are going to see the 120 uh, um, meteoroids there. But uh, probably come tomorrow evening, a lot of um, people will go out to try to have a look. Sorry, um, Mr. S Wong, Secretary. Um, I have to say that probably at most you are doing some greening efforts, uh, having a light, an hour uh, of uh, lights out, or you try to improve the water quality, and you propose uh, desalination. I think uh, we need to be fair to the bureau. Well. As far as the carbon emission is concerned, and as far as the UN uh, proposals are concerned, it seems that we haven't got very specific goals to implement what the UN has been asking for. I don't quite agree that we should be having very dramatic uh, action. In Hong Kong, for us to exercise um, our efforts uh, to go green, I think it will be a very difficult task. This is because many people would think that this is just um, something extra. It is something uh, that is optional. Say, for example, when you talk about carbon emission or green transport, uh, using the bicycle to go to work, I think the majority of the citizens would think that this is something like um, a middle class lifestyle. That is, uh, when you have a choice, uh, you can choose it. If you ask me to ride a bicycle to work, I think I would tell you that I would rather have um, 30 minutes more sleep and take the uh, public transport. So for us to have sustainable development, there is a question that we cannot avoid. Uh, there is uh, what sort of uh, a city do we want to live in? What is meant by a quality life in Hong Kong? In Hong Kong, today, the Hong Kong Kongers are no longer asking such questions because they would think that it is absurd to start thinking about such questions. Now, even for the collocation of the clearance uh, facilities, is not regarded as unconstitutional, and $1,500 billion will be dumped into the sea for reclamation. So in the light of such a government, the people of Hong Kong won't be interested in being green, smart technology, and uh, low carbon. In fact, we can't dodge the issue. That is, what about our values? What sort of uh, better life are we uh, aspiring towards. Well, at this stage, for those of you who have been tuning in to the radio programs, you will, you will say that, well, the uh, Environment Bureau uh, has launched different campaigns, like the VEE and then the uh, charging scheme for municipal solid waste. Well, so many efforts um, are just not green, uh, are not going to make the city green. And you will be told that they would rather see you being uh, sort of um, uh, disbanded. Now, for the WEEE, I think that's the um, most important effort. But then it has been said that it would only be a collusion because just one service provider has been ordained to become the collector, the service provider. The Twin Moon facility has already been filled up, and then another site has to be offered in Kowloon Bay. Many people don't want to keep their old uh, electrical appliances, and they could have given it to a recycler. Now, with your scheme, uh, it means that all the recyclers are uh, not able to um, collect such goods. Many people are saying that uh, you shouldn't try to deny the grassroots uh, a means of livelihood, because all your efforts 
in the name of environmental protection are very intrusive and and then I understand that there will be three measures to be implemented. First of all, the government is going to expand the TT CCTV system to cover 170 black spots to catch the litterbugs. Uh, a joint effort of the FDHD as well as the EPD. And then there will be the multifunction smart lamp posts. So um, many places will be under surveillance. Kai Te Kun Tong, Wan Chai, the central. Well, it means um, you will be watched to see if you are littering. I think I have to ask this basic question. Are you trying to scare people uh, into uh, keeping the place clean? Or are you trying to catch the mainlanders who come to Hong Kong on an individual visit scheme? Well, why don't you learn from Taiwan? Uh, they spent 17 years in implementing the charging scheme for uh, municipal solid waste. But you haven't sort of uh, made reference to their um, plan in entirety. Now, if somebody has been reported for littering, then um, there will be a penalty on, the, on those uh, who commit an offence. Well, the... If you are a sort of um, a person who report the offenders, then you get a rebate. But are you going to allow everybody to uh, turn on the neighbors? Uh, you maybe the people of Hong some people will be happy, but then you are destroying the neighborhood uh, spirit. So, what sort of a uh, quality life are we um, looking for? Uh, I think we want a more civic-minded society. And I'm sure it must be a bottom-up approach for what you are trying to launch. I think it is very intrusive and it is not a, a good piece of uh, policy. Hong Kong. Mr. Chong Kwok Pan. In Hong Kong, we attach a lot of significance uh, to clothing, food, uh, housing and uh, also transportation. Now, uh, in the government's uh, environmental policy, there is nothing about um, clothing. Uh, now, we have uh, the uh, first uh, food waste uh, treatment facility, and uh, the second is in the pipeline, and uh, we have yet to see whether it is going to be successful. And as for housing, uh, the secretary is an expert in uh, housing or in uh, architecture. And uh, for transportation, um, Mr. Yick has commented a lot on our policies for green transportation. Yeah, we have policies for that. But I think we have left behind clothing. We do not have any green policy for uh, clothing. Uh, the industry has recently done an international survey covering five major cities, New York, London, uh, Tokyo, Shanghai, Hong Kong. 1,000 uh, local residents in each city were polled on their views on uh, green clothing. And I think uh, the findings are quite interesting. Shanghai residents have a stronger sense uh, for the environment than that of Hong Kong. They are willing to pay more if uh, a garment is uh, made of green, uh, is made using green technology, and they're willing to pay more for such a dress. Whereas in Hong Kong, it's different. People are not willing to pay more for um, green garments. And so our awareness and education are different. I hope that the administration can educate our public more our uh, young people in particular, uh, on uh, the concept of green clothing. And do we have uh, such things in Hong Kong? Of course, we are already uh, world class. We're already world class in this regard. You've just visited um, um, green uh, textile uh, plant in our industrial park last September. And what is it about? So, uh, we have uh, recycle. Uh, we recycle old uh, garments, and then uh, the yarn is broken up 
and uh, made into um, new usable yarn again. And uh, we were asked, how come we can do it in Hong Kong? No other advanced economies are able to do the same. I think other countries have the same concept. They have got, uh, they might have uh, um, research into this technology. But most advanced economies do not have the technology and uh, industry to support it. Hong Kong has been uh, in the garment industry for decades, and we have the technical know-how to back up the concept. So technology plus green production arrives at a green um, product. It is uh, the Taipo Industrial Estate. If you can't travel that far, you can go to Chunwan Nemfeng um, Garment uh, Plant. They have a 40 TH equivalent production line. Well, you can anywhere take an old garment there and within Four hours, it can be turned into a brand new um, garment. You can see for yourself. This is a pride of Hong Kong. Our technology can lead the world in this regard. In what way? We have a cross-boundary. Um, multinational enterprise H and M is a retail uh, chain. It has uh, purchased two uh, such machines from Hong Kong to Sweden, and uh, some other enterprises are preparing to uh, buy it from Hong Kong. Well, some members talked about Greater Bay Area. Now we can move uh, the production lines back to GBA. You talked about green finance. In fact, uh, this is green uh, upcycling or recycling. Well, uh, there is the clothing stumped everywhere in the world. And how are we going to deal with them? We just throw them away now. They can recycle old garments and turn them into new. Isn't it amazing? So I have uh, submitted a proposal to you, Secretary, how we can turn Hong Kong into a world-class sustainable garment center in the world. I think you should dwell into this. This is not just good for Hong Kong, but for the whole world. And Hong Kong is such a small place, but we're going to affect. We have to make it. We are going to make an impact on the whole world through this. I think that this uh, must be an eye-opener for members too. You should arrange uh, for a visit to the Green Garment Factory in Taipo and look at the technology. Thank you. Mr. Yu Si Wing. Thank you. President, Clim extreme climate is uh, causing disasters all over the world, and Hong Kong uh, cannot be left alone. And uh, just this summer, the Royal Observatory, I mean the Hong Kong Observatory, uh, uh, noted uh, uh, registered a high temperature of 33 degrees um, Celsius for uh, six days in a row. And then uh, the super typhoon Mangat uh, wreaked havoc in uh, many places in Hong Kong. I think we still remember it. I agree with the original motion of Mr. Martin and Leo. We must uh, cope with the um, extreme weather and adapt to climate change. Hong Kong, including uh, many party stakes, including China, uh, adopted the uh, Paris Agreement in 20 for uh, implementation in 2026, and we should lower emission to uh, cope with weather change. Uh, the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Wang Yi, just said last week that uh, China will continue to go along the way of uh, green production and sustainable development. Hong Kong is part of the country and also an international city. So, as I said, in the motion, we have the duty to um, lower carbon emission.
in 2017 or early 2017, under the leadership of the CS4A, there was the steering committee to cope with climate change. And there was an action blueprint for climate change 2030 plus. We have uh, got the uh, short, long, and medium targets for uh, tackling climate change. In this year's policy address, it was uh, specifically mentioned that by 2020 or before, we should have a long term uh, emission reduction targets for all the way to 2025 to show our commitment to green issues. I hope the administration can. Uh, Honor is undertaking. Now, 70% of our greenhouse gases come from gener electricity generation, and the business sector accounts for 90% of uh, the emissions in Hong Kong. Shopping mall services, they need to use air conditioning systems uh, around the clock. And there was a survey of uh, the uh, indoor temperature of shopping malls. It was found that the temperature was far too low in one shopping mall. The temperature was as low as 19 degrees Celsius in a particular shopping mall, and uh, it was far lower than uh, what uh, for the comfort of um, human bodies. So one proposals. Was one proposal was to uh, have energy saving charter with uh, the business sector so that uh, the indoor room temperature should be maintained at a reasonable level, in particular during the non peak hours of the day. And they can also follow the practice of uh, the airport authority. They can use different sensors uh, to uh, look at the um, performance of different. Shopping malls, and they can use uh, cloud uh, computing uh, for data analysis, and then we can formulate energy saving strategies. And we can also um, consider using similar district cooling system as that of Kitech. By central cooling systems, we can then uh, lower the energy consumption of different units. Uh, it is said that the system uh, can uh, cut the um, power consumption by two to three units per unit. Uh, there are many proposals on green transport, including a uh, green uh, corridor in uh, new development areas and to improve the policies for uh, cycling and also electric vehicles. 16% uh, of our uh, carbon emissions come from transportation and uh, with buses and taking up the majority. According to our records in the past 10 years, air monitoring stations are measuring uh, the uh, respirable, uh, suspended respirable particles and also uh, carbon uh, mon dioxide and nitrogen oxides. Well, they have been reducing. This is because of the Green Transportation Fund uh, sponsoring commercial vehicles to use uh, low emission vehicles. Some of the view that the government should continue to create favorable conditions for a uh, green transport and uh, provide subsidy for the use of electric vehicles. In addition to those are proven measures, we should also encourage members of the public to use electric private vehicles. And there is room for this policy to be reviewed. In 2017, uh, the exemption for first time registration tax of electric vehicles uh, was um, uh, abolished and uh, uh, in re instead, a 97,000 uh, subsidy was used. Uh, and this year, we have also got a one-for-one -one replacement policy for uh, new electric vehicles, subject to a ceiling of a quarter of a million. However, the two policies are not very well received. From March to September this year, the total number of uh, new vehicles registered was over 61, 610,000. And for the one 
for one replacement as at end November, the TD has only approved 268 applications. The government has to review the reasons and find out whether the subsidy level is too low or for other reasons or because we do not have enough high-speed recharging points. I hope that the government can the government can implement uh, targeted measures to encourage members of the public to turn to use electric vehicles. I urge the administration to review the policy so that uh, to ensure that they are effective. Thank you. I'll lock in, Mr. Mr. Leo, um, the climate change is a global issue, and Hong Kong is not immune to that. So and. In transform into a green and low carbon smart society and economy so as to actually alleviating global climate change. I'm sure that no one would object to that. And yet there's a lot of wording in the motion or rather ambiguous. So so the green carbon and low car green and low carbon smart society and economy is just um, it's just simply controversial. Just for green and low carbon smart so wording like this will be a uh, debate fodder. Just like earlier we uh, scrutinized the green bond grant scheme. So what is the definition of green? When it comes to the green bonds, we'll have questions. So um, is that simply political stunt in the name of green to uh, safeguard the large scale Property development project. Last night, the Link REIT is again selling a bunch of shopping malls, and while uh, they have one uh, project called uh, Hoi Ban Wei in Kowloon Bay and claim it's a green project. Why is it green? Because uh, one small part of the project have include a green lawn and charger for electric vehicles that will make it a green project and Mr. Lok Hong mentioned that the XRL is a green project as a green public works and we're not uh, f remember that the XRL had get rid of Choyin village and actually you are destroying people's homes or uh, it more or less uh, destroy the environment on one hand, the government has not given a clear definition of green, and there will come different definitions across different projects and no uh, specified green policy objectives. And having considered whether the infrastructure projects are absolutely vital or just simply in favor of all kinds of development, which uh, preoccupied with the government mindset in the name of green and described as green public work, green bonds, and so on, and then some that uh, discharged their uh, uh, environmental protection duty, which simply self deceiving and irresponsible. Why is the government don't seem to have a, a a target for this as for the low carbon, green, and smart? I believe the government we need to have some concrete policies. So for low carbon, well, I think the Secretary can answer this question. On reducing carbon emissions, do you have a timetable and target? Looking at the GAFON website, the administration claims they have been ab abiding with the Paris Accord by 2030 that the carbon intensity will be reduced at 2005 levels to by 65% to 70%, which is the equivalent of 20 the absolute of twenty six percent of the uh, per capita commission for, um, over thirty six tons, and our transit policy in urban planning. How can it help us achieve this goal? Take the number of private car vehicles. In twenty seventeen, we have uh, seven zero point seven six a million flight and private cars. In two thousand six. There are about 0 0.26 million to 2017 to grow to 0 0.25 million, a 45% increase. So we mentioned uh, about these bicycle friendly policies and claims that return the waterfront to the public. And Chet Hui have uh, proposed a motion to uh, that they're making bicycle a 
mode of transport, and the administration response was not encourage the public uh, to use bicycle in the urban areas and the mean of transport. So it's, compare that with the foreign other countries, it seems ridiculous. So the southern district, we have uh, biking trails like 800 meters and all. Where are they? There's uh, um, encircling the cyber port. That's all for the entire southern district. So in other cities, they're encouraging um, people to use bicycles for short trips. Instead of resorting to driving, while we don't have much supporting facilities and have never considered uh, come up with more bike-friendly policies, and along the coastline of the island, so can you consider uh, having bike tracks along the coastline. I have uh, uh, by, uh, well, go on uh, by biking with my friends along the coastline to try to lobby for a bike path and nothing come out of it and this works uh, well, um, you don't see a timetable for the construction. What for planning transport policy to govern mindset? seems to be quite far off from a green low carbon smart society and need to speed up uh, all in all and base there's no uh, government stem definition of uh, greens of uh, interpreted of uh, a supporting infrastructure and pro construction and uh, a lot of the amendments of this motion for example dr lower Kwok mentioned the intellectualization of issues as well as paying tax and land concessions for green projects and can't learn and it's a of the amendments on green bond finance scheme i'm not able to support them and for the original motion and all other amendments that i will support them i still submit mr chen kin bo The extreme weather caused by climate change has affected Hong Kong. We have been uh, on the path of uh, multiple typhoons, for example, the super typhoon Mangut, which led to uh, record breaking uh, storms with um, uh, tens of thousands of trees being uh, fallen. I appreciate they have woke up the public on this issue, and Martin Stell's motion gave this opportunity to, for reflection. Whether we're doing good enough job to protecting the earth, carbon dioxide is one of the main causes of causing climate change. Uh, reducing carbon emissions is a, our duty. The government had did some work in this area. When I first entered lecture in 2008, I joined the Environmental Affairs Panel and um, working with Alec Lechko, uh, uh, pushing the government to spend 3.1 billion to phase out old diesel vehicles. The government also legislate to turn off the keys of vehicles and also work with the Guangde government to have this um, air pollution control ordinance. And now we can see major improvements in air quality. So the government had did uh, uh, some work in terms of improving the environment. Some on some areas, for example, the promotion of electric vehicles. You know that the fossil uh, vehicles are one of the major source of pollution. And now the Hong Kong has about um, 0.55 million uh, fossil cars, and for electric cars, there are only over 11,000 of those. When well, promoting e vehicles for 10 years, it had a uh, low adoption. A lot of countries had planned to uh, ban the sale of fossil fuel cars, and Hong Kong is apparently lagging behind. And also, we ought to have a, a first registration tax concession and a one for one replacement scheme to encourage switch to EVs and not be effective. The biggest challenge would be the insufficient charging facilities. Hong Kong only have about 2,000 charges, and even the public is keen to switch to EVs. Well, easy to buy cars, but difficult to charge at the end, they will force to abandon their plans. I want to share a story with you. So, I'm the uh, chairman of the owners' committee at a major housing estate for the issue of installating charges have been trouble for many years. And its feasibility said it takes two years, very complicated procedures, then to enhance the po uh, power supply capacity and the arising legal issues, expensive installation and maintenance costs. Unfortunately, the two power companies are able to help the residents to inst install on the end of the uh, one by one basis, then not all management companies are, are welcoming. Some of the mid sized property management companies, due to limited manpower, are uh, averse to the trouble. Even if, uh, when being asked by the owners, they're still reluctant. So, it's constrained the development of the EVs to promote the adoption. The government will think of ways to address the shortage of chargers.
Besides government minimal disease, they personally have its play a major role. So promote a low carbon lifestyle, we must reduce the energy we use in our daily lives. To reduce our pollution to nature, for example, use less power, use more energy efficient electric appliances, to recycling our work, use more public transport, reduce paper use, and stop plastic paper and disposable tableware. And this year, and the uh, World Friend Milk Day this year is to uh, uh, do away with the plastics. Uh, with government promotion, we're seeing results, and some of the public will stop using disposable tableware and drinking straws. Some of the fast food shops will no longer proactively offer them. It shows that the public had welcomed these green initiatives. This uh, daily habits, if changed, are able to uh, contribute to was uh, reduce carbon emissions. And now it's the waste disposal MSW charity amendment bill. It might bring us much trouble to the public. However, it changed our way of disposing our habit as it would drive the society to change to reduce waste, so to uh, reduce carbon emissions and reduce waste, even though we need to pay the uh, waste charging, but it's still worthy of support. And the development of the smart city also helped to reduce carbon emissions. And a lot of mainland great cities has switched to uh, as intelligentization to saving paper. For example, in restaurants, the, the customers will uh, look, uh, don't need a paper menus and receipt and so on. Everything is done without paper and electronically. So I can cite other examples. I hope that the government that were uh, studying urban development, they could uh, think from the green perspective. Example is mentioned about the issue of the artificial island. The criticisms are simply making a uh, more uh, uh, blow out of proportion. And uh, well, uh, we generated carbon and emissions in every aspect of life, then how do we minimize the impact is the focus. Calvin claims that the land touch more vision is would take the for conservation first and development later and the uh, environmental assessment impact will then scientific basis and the reclamation will be done the green friendly way. I must stress that at completion of the artificial islands it have a corner of its own, it can achieve to become a zero carbon community in terms of boosting the greening ratio on using a green transport mode and renewable energy and using a uh, uh, energy efficient designs and advanced recycling management. So in the future, the in terms of carbon emissions and green mode protection, have, the artificial island will have a great edge. And while all the proposals have no such comparable benefits, those are a blind object. The reclamation can fund full Hong Kong for a long time. The reclamation comes with the cost, and I'm sure that the benefits of the public to Hong Kong will far outweigh its cons. And now we're talking about uh, those with a roof over the head and Jones. So you all will um, subjugate yourselves while choking yourself, but some don't. Mr. Ho Kai Ming. Did you say, uh, uh, Mr. Ma Fong Kwa. The original motion by Ma Fong Kwa and uh, we, uh, received nine members for other members, which reflected the deep concern of this issue and its of uh, major significance and uh, will be critical to the future development of Hong Kong. The huge number of amendments made it impossible to re respond individually. I support Martin Liu's original motion. And as pointed out, that we urge the uh, uh, SR government to cope with the climate change more proactively. I think besides the government, also require the entire society to take us seriously and working together in order to uh, fulfill this goal. The government should play the role of a leader and organizer and promoter. The government, in coping with climate change in transforming Hong Kong into a green and low carbon smart city and economy, as of today, I can say that it's far from satisfactory. According to a study report by a local green group, in comparing Hong Kong with five Asian cities, for example, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Seoul, Tokyo, and Singapore, the conclusion is not surprising. Hong Kong has been rated as the worst performing city, and especially for the carbon intensity from power generation, the renewable energy goal, and switching to the EVs ratio. This uh, Hong Kong was at the bottom. The Report also point out in the usage of RE made up of the one to two percent of the entire energy consumption, which is a pittance. And uh, what the government in the Hong Kong Climate Action Plan 2030 projections that the RE proportions had only made up of three to four percent, which is seen to be extremely conservative. The, the percentage of EVs on the road as of this 
September 2018. In Hong Kong, we have uh, under 11,000 EVs, which is about 1.8% uh, of the total number. And compared to the previous 10 years, it seems that uh, the, there's a substantial growth. And due to the uh, number of charges lagging way behind, and the economic incentive uh, proposed by government have been scrapped, and less to the adoption rate have slowed down, and the growth rate of EVs had far lagging behind other areas. And the government have been uh, evaded the uh, setting a target uh, a percentage has. I think the government performance should be criticized. And next, I would like to talk about recycling and waste disposal. According to the 2014 uh, uh, Kitch, uh, Organic Waste Plan, the government plan to set up five or six organic resource recovery centers. As of now, they only completed one. And the law awaited phase two. Just two weeks ago at the Public Works Subcommittee, is not able to, to secure a granting approval, which is extremely humiliating. And just blaming the government is not appropriate. As uh, uh, LegCo, we need to play more of an active role in uh, giving more attention and support. On the other hand, while the, uh, we're talking about a green and low-carbon lifestyle, the disposal of solid municipal waste is on the rise year on year, and quite ironic, in Korea, Taiwan, and Japan have implemented solid waste charging for quite some time and have achieved that impressive results, whereas Hong Kong is still uh, holding back. And recently, government have launched new policies and a new bill. And in this chamber, due to various reasons, I felt that we were not able to reach a total consensus. In such state of backwardness, we must ask ourselves, uh, what are the causes? President, in this chamber, different political parties and different interest groups should work with the government and be decisive to uh, enhance the Hong Kong solid disposal policies. President, after Haicho and Mankut's onslaught that left a trail of destruction behind, the extreme weather to impact to Hong Kong will be more frequent in times ahead. The government in the process must learn its lessons and willing to uh, adopt uh, suggestions, including the remedial work with some coordinating uh, traffic and uh, cleanup to become fully prepared. President, the uh, green uh, topic, could, the people could easily point their finger at the government. I don't think this go far enough to uh, do this. At, well, we need the whole society to complete this task together. The government should take the lead, and various uh, political parties and enterprises and the interest groups who need to cast aside their interests and think for the collective good, and need to motivate the entire society to proactively cope with the changing climate and the challenges it brought forth with. President, even though some of them Amendments I would not uh, totally fully concur, and I hope that the colleagues in this chamber and the government officials can listen to today's debate carefully in promoting the green and low carbon smart city economy and in coping with climate change and to doing something what all need to do. I so submit. Mr. Ho Kai Ming, thank you, Mr. President. Well, I think it is. A classic photograph. Uh, somebody who looks like Wang Kok Hing. Uh, he's an office worker. He wears a backpack and he's trying to make his way through the jungle. That's the aftermath of Typhoon Hankert. Uh, I'm sure uh, we have to try to think about the question is it because we have a strong sense of duty and so we want to? Um, go all out so as to go back to work. Uh, 
or you love your your work so much that you want to go back to the office, uh, I think most of us have no choice but to um, make our ends meet, and so we have to go to work. Well, workers have to uh, find a way, had to find a way to return to the workplace despite all the difficulties, because if not, uh, we'll be losing our attendance bonus. Uh, there wasn't any suspension of work on that particular day. Now, I think it is more than a question of environmental protection. It's a matter of the need to change the direction of our governance. I do appreciate the work of the Environment Bureau, but it hasn't got enough money, it hasn't got enough powers. So you, you, it, looks that, uh, it looks like that you agree with me, Secretary. And whenever you try to make changes to any policies, you have to coordinate with other departments and other policy bureaus. Even for the construction of the organic waste treatment plant, uh, it has um, not been supported. So I think it's a matter of we need to change the uh, philosophy of governance. Uh, I think it's better uh, for you to have come here in the capacity as the acting cis for a but unfortunately you are not wearing the hat today. Now to cope with climate climate change, I think uh, we need to come up with policy changes. Now in fact um what about the citizens? Um what should we do in response? Uh, we represent the labor sector. I have to mention that we need to legislate to protect the workers who have to um, risk their lives to go to work despite the damages um, that can be seen all over the place in the aftermath of the super typhoon. So um, the FTU has drafted a piece of legislation um, to ask for work suspension in the aftermath of extreme weather conditions. So the next time we are better prepared, and then um, there, it is known that there is a consensus for us to cope with uh, natural disasters and extreme weather conditions. Maybe members have got different views. Maybe you want to um, tell us that you're worried as to how the attendance bonus should be sort of uh, calculated and whether the attendance should be counted or not. But then we're talking about precious human lives. And for the USA, it is the country which is producing the largest amount of carbon dioxide. Now, if uh, it is going to pull out of the Paris Agreement, we can only expect more extreme weather conditions. We need to be prepared psychologically and uh, in all aspects of our life. So probably the secretary has to push for the policy changes. And I hope that in his reply, the secretary can tell us whether he's going to tell the chief executive the next time we have got something similar to Super Typhoon Mankat, maybe the Seeing Council should consider suspending classes and suspending work. And if a worker thinks that uh, it is not safe for him to turn up at work, then uh, his uh, salary should not be deducted. It's not they're lazy and, don't want, and doesn't want to go to work. It's just that it's impossible for him to find a way to go to work. I think there are feasible ways to go about it. In Guangzhou, when there is a typhoon, they have got a joint office, and then they will um, make an announcement. And there was the announcement to suspend work, to suspend classes, and to suspend um, production. So all the enterprises uh, have to follow the directive, and um, all uh, everything will come to a standstill so as to safeguard um, our safety. And then for Shenzhen, it is just across the river. They have also got a uh, special piece of legislation concerning flooding and uh, typhoons. So they're able to suspend work and classes. In Taiwan, again, they have got a regulation to allow people to stay at home uh, when there is a major um, natural disaster. So on this occasion, uh, we were faced with a super typhoon.
uh, we may have other types of uh, extreme weather conditions. Um, maybe we'll get a hailstorm, and there may be other types of well, well, weather conditions. So we need to be prepared. And in the past, uh, winter was the um, sort of um, strongest typhoon we had in memory when we were young. Uh, I don't think our preparedness should be built on such uh, outdated information. I don't think it is right to expect workers to turn up at work a few, few hours after the typhoon signal has been lowered. Well, in fact, uh, if you go around, um, we still have fallen trees and damaged lampposts. Uh, it is now winter time, and the typhoon left us for a few months already, but there are still signs of the damage done. I don't think we should be that outdated. Uh, we should move with the times, and we should prepare for extreme weathers because they're going to uh, bring a lot of um, uh, damage to our properties. I don't think it is uh, what we expect of a responsible government. So for the secretary, uh, the next time you act uh, the post of CS, please make sure that you have good coordination and then you can cope with the uh, extreme weather. Mr. Ray Chen, would you like to speak? Mr. President, regarding Mr. Martin Liao's motion, well, I would like to focus on a number of points. That is um, how we are going to provide people of Hong Kong with due protection and um, to cope with the situation uh, proactively and in time. Now, even when uh, we have zero emission, if China and the USA are not going to con restrain themselves in carbon emission, I'm not for, uh, optimistic about turning the trend of um, global warming. I don't think the USA would be interested in um, emission uh, reduction. Now, for China, I think the air quality has worsened because production is allowed um, to continue despite the um, air pollution problem. For the two major economies, they are not going to uh, reduce carbon emission. So there will be a growing level of um, greenhouse gases. So Hong Kong is a coastal city, we have to bear the brunt. So for Mr. Martin Yeo's uh, motion, uh, he talks about um, review at an appropriate time and also enhancing the capabilities appropriately to withstand the extreme weather. I think it is very important. We were hit by two super typhoons, Hepto as well as uh, Mankat. I think extreme weather conditions are going to affect us more and more often. I think in the past, we had underestimated the disruption brought about by such weather conditions, and we have overestimated our capabilities. When you reclaimed land for Hang Fa Chun, have you, did you ever consider uh, the damage that could be done to the uh, waterfront blocks? And for Chang Wen Oh, have you ever did you ever consider the strong waves that would hit the coastal uh, roads as well as the facilities there? Now, two months have already passed since Mankert hit Hong Kong, as Mr. Ho Wa Ming has said. I think uh, not all the foreign trees have been cleared, and even for traffic signs, they haven't been repaired. Now, I'm holding up a photograph that's uh, in Lok Fu, a busy urban uh, spot. Um, the sign has come down uh, for two months now, and yet uh, it hasn't been fixed. So you can see that um, there is room for uh, improvement as far as the government's um, response is concerned. Probably we have to enhance our capability to deal with such disasters. If the government is being rational, it will be objective and scientific and will approach the matter with a humble heart so that in the long term, we are able to cope with the challenges brought about by extreme weather conditions. But what sort of a government have we got here? Can we expect our government to be rational, objective and scientific in its assessment? I think the example of Lentau Tomorrow Vision is a very illustrative example. Now, 
we are going to have a reclamation of 1,700 hectares of land. Well, many people are going all out to say that they are in full support of reclamation. They turn a blind eye to the uh, risk brought about by the artificial islands. And in fact, uh, there was a report um, from Hong Kong Foundation saying that we should uh, reclaim more land. And it was said that the maximum height of the waves would only be two meters. And the former uh, director of the observatory, Mr. Lam Tu Ying, rebutted um, the um, uh, estimate. But then it is not easy for us to um, tell the truth, because as soon as Mr. Lam talked about that, he was heavily criticized. And then it was said that um, the artificial island would face uh, strong currents and uh, tall, uh, high waves. But the government has turned a blind eye to all such um, sort of concerns. Uh, are we going to have an initial assessment? Are we going to get the data in relation to the impact on our climate? Uh, the government has said that it would be an internal um, document, and they have to study as to whether the document can be disclosed. Two months have already passed, and again, we haven't got anything uh, in relation to the full document of the internal assessment. The government won't listen to the um, objection voices. The government won't heed our advice against reclamation. The government is being stubborn. The government is going to um, go ahead with the project. So the government would not adopt a scientific and rational approach to look at the risk uh, in relation to the projects that they have planned. They would only look at the political factor. I think it is high time for the government to look at the infrastructural projects that we have planned and built. Don't say that um, this is a 30-year, 50-year, 100-year return uh, disaster. In other words, it is uh, not something that has been planned. It is not something that has been anticipated. Now I'm asking you to regard it as a wake-up call, and you should prepare for the rainy days. Now, well, I don't think we should adopt the approach or the mindset of the uh, great leap forward. That is, uh, we should be fearless in trying to um, tackle um, or go ahead with the construction projects. Now, the artificial island um, may not be able to withstand the extreme weather conditions, but now the government is saying that it is going to be feasible, and if something happens uh, by then, uh, it is until that happens, then we start to find a way to cope with it. I think our biggest enemy is not, um, the, um, is not nature, rather it's human beings. Because if the government is to give priority to political missions and allow political missions to prevail above scientific facts and ignore the risk concerning infrastructural planning, jeopardizing our lives and properties, then we will be unnecessarily affected by extreme weather conditions. Thank you. Jeremy Tan. Thank you, Madam De Deputy. Today's on this motion to green and low carbon smart society and economy. And a lot of my colleagues know said about electric vehicles. Just yesterday, at the oral questions, uh, we have the Secretary for Environment present. We were discussing this one for one replacement scheme for EVs, and Dr. Kiki Kwok's amendment also touched on that. So it's just, the right occasion for the yesterday. We don't have enough time for this, and now we get another chance today. Um, well, I'm not going to start with what's wrong with your policy. Is that your policy is based on your projections? That with these projections, therefore you feel that the direction policy should going this way. So it should be based on certain facts, requests, or issue. That's why you come up with policies to address it. The rationale goes, so we have 7.4 million in Hong Kong. And all of a sudden, you claim uh, 
we only have a three-year housing plan is enough, and yet you have the wrong population projection. Of course, I will point that out to you. And like the Secretary of Environment said, and we need to wait for three years before reviewing. And now, let's say Hong Kong, let's say we have 7.5 million f for easy sake, and let's say the birth rate about 50,000 people per year. So um, because of this, in 10 years, we estimated that in Hong Kong, that we come to 8 million. So it is uh, 50,000 people times 10, then it means it's 8 million. So uh, this policy is based on the uh, 8 million population projection in 10 years' time. And then people come up and say, hey, there's a problem with the math. And you insist that there's nothing wrong with the math. We have to wait for three years. Because I only provide you with the birth rate, I didn't give, provide the, birth, the death rate. So within 10 years, it could stay at 7.5 million or 7.3 million or slightly more. But there's no way that it should reach 8 million because the people would pass away during this time. By the same token, and your projections are the number of EVs, that's, you adopt this thinking. The numbers provided by you that are October 24th and responding to the written question by Tanya Chan, you provided the figures at, at the uh, 31st of March in 2018 that those who own uh, cars more than three years at about um, 186,000. And projected by 2021, this number will rise to 474,000, which is 300,000 more cars and suddenly become eligible. And you know that right away it is impossible because you're assuming everyone will not sell their car within three years, just buying but no selling. That give rise to the number you, you cited. I wonder how this number is, how this calculation done by your colleague. This is just common sense and logic. And as you in yesterday or question segment, you uh, justify that why is that necessary to review? Because you claimed after doing your math, you claimed there be, um, about four hundred seventy thousand cars eligible for one for one replacement. And in Hong Kong, there's just about six hundred thousand private vehicles. So like four, th th three fourths of the cars are eligible for one for one. That means we have a lot of cars eligible. So why do we have to consider change the threshold? Well, it all makes sense as long as we have the actual number of 470,000 cars in three years' time, then there's no need to relax that. But it's impossible. You have 300,000 cars, assuming you have this number of people that decided not to sell or buy the car, so we changed the a habit instead of replacing the car every three to four years. All of a sudden, they change that I definitely would not sell the car in three years. From the number eligible of car owners to 180 to uh, 470,000, and you claim people are living much longer. So for the birth rate of 50,000 people, then for 7.5 million, it definitely would reach 8 million in 10 years time because no one would die. So you, we have this kind of projection going on. So. If your policy is rest upon a established fact, I will, will have no question about it. And yet your rationale is logic is based on quicksand or what I think is it, um, erroneous calculations. So are, are you still um, maintaining your position? Are you um, heading into brick wall? Well, point me out where I get wrong then. Or even the secretary. I wonder who, who did, who, whose colleague of yours have done this math. Let's not take 2018. This uh, count backwards from 2017, 2016, 2015, or 14. Well, uh, if, let's say we initiated one on one scheme and assuming this three year uh, continuous uh, ownership. So, what would the uh, backward projections that I can guarantee that it will not stray too far but 170 or 180,000? So, what does that prove? Your math is wrong.
we don't mind the administration uh, having to wrong arithmetic. The worst is that after we point it out and you're unwilling to admit it, unwilling to apply common sense to it, just like the birth rate presumption, assuming there's no deaths in three years. And Hong Kong and Ledger cannot accept the administration or the public officers that despite being at point of this common sense era, you disregard it and, and, and insist of uh, heading toward the brick wall since I've decided to do so a year ago. I don't care uh, how close this brick wall is. Mr. Lok Chung Hong. The global climate change is deteriorating, so we have a more unpredictable weather. And it's feel that at the beginning of December, it is pretty uh, warm. We are on short sleeves, and only this few days we the, get turned old. And the melting of glaciers and two poles have led to rising sea levels, and the uh, coastal areas have led to frequent uh, flooding. Oh, in uh, Qinghai, uh, Gansu, in have accelerated the melting of the glaciers, and experts have predicted, have attributed the glacier melting to the two major flooding in the northwestern province. Besides the uh, flooding, other uh, adverse weather, for example, storm and, and a snowstorm, uh, extreme cold weather, is simply a mess, and Hong Kong is not immune. In the past few years, and the hoisting of typhoon number nine and ten have more frequent, and this uh, September, we have. Uh, uh, been uh, on the path of the ty super typhoon Mangguch, which uh, led to extreme adverse weather, and broke our records in terms of wind speed and the uh, time. And uh, she's uh, led to a tree falling and a uh, destruction to buildings and all. And this every, the whole entire Hong Kong is suffering, and this uh, adverse weather will get more frequent with climate change, as uh, since the rising sea levels. That the storm in the South Pacific able to uh, absorb more energy and form more easily super typhoons. Thus, the FTU hoped the administration could be forward looking and, and also care about the work curse of a uh, community arrangement in extreme weather. During the Austin Covid Manquet, the, the, uh, the roads and some extensive damage with uh, paralyzed traffic, even. The typhoon signal have been removed at the first and second day. The public transport system was at a standstill, and for the rail system on this uh, semi paralysis, I know the East Rail um, was closed, and the uh, buses actually took a few more days to fully restore the service. And not that um, they have the suspended classes, but not the work. And Hong Kong people are lovely, and they simply love their job. And try to, they try to try their best to uh, return to the office. But such kind of dedication, it seems that as people will need required to perform like a cross country run to take, uh, dodging the branches and queuing for hours at the station in order to report to duty. Is that something uh, ideal? And it, we can. We need it to demonstrate the Hong Kong hard working spirit. It was very crowded and poor ventilation at the platforms, and many people passed away. For those who couldn't go to work, some had to pay deducted. Even when they arrived at companies, and and since since they were late to work, they would have a deducted pay. You can complain to employees being unscrupulous. And now we don't have any legislation protecting them. And FTU had conducted a survey. Seven percent of the employees have been deducted uh, of the pay due to uh, coming to work to work. And for until they did not report the duty, they were actually uh, deducted holiday pay and money. Even though the chief executive had repeatedly appealed to employees to be more understanding, and this word appearing to the past few days again, and yet a lot of the employees have been deducted their hol holiday leaves and pay, and the government's appeal had no effect. So, uh, what do we, what protection do we need?
Well, second choice, I wonder if you're aware, as since you for the environment, I wonder if you're not familiar with the labor and welfare factors, although you can take it back to the entire uh, cabinet. And not to do a uh, code of practice under adverse weather is uh, non binding. And adverse weather required the both sides to negotiate. Well, at the end, it's just uh, decided by the boss. The reality is, regardless of whatever typhoon signal hoisted, you still have to go to work. There's no protection whatsoever for the employees. So the FTU had proposed that the administration claim that it has no legal basis to uh, announce a work suspension order so employees have to risk your lives. Thus, a legislative proposal involved that stipulated that during the time of natural disasters and af in the aftermath and in every situation to have a legally binding work suspension arrangement. We proposed a set up a, a emergency shows at the bill on a work suspension due to extreme weather. We have been discussing at a relevant panel and so that we can have overrated protection in uh, adverse weather, including a setting of a, a tripod high. Uh, uh, a relevant committee to ascertain the, uh, the threshold, and the chief executive in ex at Exco will decide on the suspension arrangements and during work suspension, beside for the necessary emergency services, uh, and our other public departments and the uh, private enterprise will need to hard work, and during the work suspension, the. Um, for is not able to attend the uh, the pace cannot or the holiday leaves cannot be deducted and no punishment can be issued and and any infringement to the employee entitlements which is good as a offense uh, would be fined with uh, three hundred fifty thousand dollars with three year imprisonment and Mr. Look, I hope you can return to the motion. While this is relevant to the motion, that we could cope with climate change, our library legislation, we need to move with the times so that our workers will not to risk their lives in adverse weather reporting to work. And now that the relevant employee compensation orders need to be amended, and currently the ECO only guarantee that uh, for typhoon number number eight or both, and uh, within the four hours of, of where accident occurred to claim as a, a work injury, and after the typhoon. And the red break signal uh, hoisted. The weather is still staying bad and uh, so risky. I suggest amendments that uh, in case of adverse weather, even the typhoon signal was uh, removed and and if they're injured at work, they should be able to to um, protect it under the ECO, which I see that reasonable. In the past, we've been criticized that the uh, code of practice is not to protect the employees. Your time is up. I hope that uh, we can move to the time submission. Please stop from talking. Any other members wish to speak? Mr. Martin Liu, you may now reply. You have got five minutes. You can reply to the members. Mr. Martin Liu, Madam Deputy, first of all, I am glad to see that uh, across the political spectrum, uh, colleagues agree with me. That is, uh, we need to um, transform Hong Kong into a green and low carbon smart society and economy and proactively alleviate and cope with the global climate change. I would like to take this opportunity to think together so as to cope with the climate change as it is going to affect the survival of humankind and it is our common future. Well, as I have said, it is a very uh, wide ranging uh, topic and it is difficult to include everything uh, in my time slot. I'm grateful to members who have spoken, especially those who are moving amendments. Um, Mr. Lo Wai Gok talked about transport, uh, smart city clusters. Mr. Lo Wai, uh, Kwok Wai Kung talked about green industries. Charles Mock talked about use of data to consider the development of new and green technologies. Other members like Elizabeth Kwok, uh, Dr. K.K. Kwok, etc., talks about the wider use of bicycles and be plastic free. And then uh, um, other members also uh, uh, have other recommendations. I'm not able to list them out uh, exhaustively. But then Mr. Chu uh, also talked about a carbon tax. It is going to be new to Hong Kong. 
Well, um, it is a、uh, carbon pricing in relation to a、uh, carbon taxes with a、uh, carbon emission trading right that I referred to.、Um, It is said that by using this mechanism, we can reduce the emission by twenty percent. And in some countries, they've adopted both、uh, approaches. But then, when it comes to implementation, they are different as to which should be opted. And as with the implementation timetable, I think、um, it is still a controversial topic among the、uh, scholars. We haven't come to a conclusion. For carbon tax, it is always said that it would be difficult to come up with the right level of tax. If it is too、uh, high, then it is going to affect the government's、uh, revenue, and if it is too low, then it is not deterrent effect. In Australia, the five hundred most、uh, polluting industries have been、uh, sort of、uh, caught in the net. But at the end of the day, the SMEs and the grassroots households have been hard hit, and in fact, it is said that thirty percent of your electricity bill、uh, goes to the carbon tax. And at the end of the day, the carbon tax was withdrawn by the Australian Parli Parliament. In Hong Kong, ninety-nine percent of our enterprises are SMEs. So, would it be appropriate to introduce a carbon tax? We mustn't forget the affordability and absorbability on the part of the society. We have to keep a、uh, low tax regime in Hong Kong. There are many tools for carbon emission reduction. What is important is to choose the right tool.、Um, Meeting our、uh, own circumstances, I have no intention to start an academic debate on the question of carbon tax. But on the basis of what I have said, I don't think it is right to conduct a study on a carbon tax in Hong Kong at this moment. So I'm going to abstain from voting in relation to Mr. Edgewood's amendment. Mr. Gary Fan asked for the suspension of the construction of the artificial island. Well, in fact,、um, I think we can, of course,、uh, talk about risk management、uh, in the light of climatic change.、Um, when we want to have reclamation, and the government can do a lot to allay the fears of the public. But I don't think we should blindly object to reclamation. It is unreasonable. I am afraid can't agree with him. So I'm、uh, going to vote against this amendment. Thank you. Section for the environment. Madam Deputy, once again, I am very grateful to Mr. Martinio for moving the motion, and also the amendments from nine members. I'm very pleased to hear from all members who have spoken that they are in the main in support of、uh, our work to、uh, combat climate change, and they have given us very、uh, a lot of valuable opinions. As I said in my opening. Remarks: We are strengthening、um, the uh, work of、uh, different departments and bureaus to tackle this problem. Now,、uh, based on information provided by different bureaus and、uh, departments, I am going to、uh, respond to、uh, the members' remarks from nine、uh, aspects. The first is to、uh, to alleviate climate change. By means of power generation and renewable energy, well, uh, first, uh, power generation. Uh, two thirds of our carbon emissions have come from power generation, and so we have to lessen uh, power uh, carbon emission、uh, by means of using a greener form of power generation. We have a lot of、um, measures, and they include in the coming ten years, we will gradually. Turn to use of natural gas for power generation to gradually replace our coal-fired power generation units, and we are going to introduce a incentive、uh, for using a feed-in tariff. So、uh, we. Have the plan to accept、uh, recommendation、uh, in December this in October this year and next year, and then the two power companies have recently received over a thousand applications, and、uh, we are going to、uh, relax gradually 
the restrictions in relation to installation of photovoltaic systems at rooftop of anti-exempt houses such that subject to the fulfillment of specified conditions, residents may continue to use their roofs for legal purposes while combating climate change. And they can uh, install uh, such uh, facilities of no more than 2.5 meters. And in uh, lower uh, buildings of uh, the private sector, we will continue to relax our restrictions in this regard. D, we will introduce legislative amendments to exempt individuals from the requirements to apply for business registration and file profits tax returns in respect of their participation in the uh, fitting tariff scheme by installing LE systems at their residential premises. And we will introduce a new program to assist schools and NGOs in installing small RE systems and uh, we will explore the installation of large-scale floating photovoltaic systems at suitable locations and reservoirs. We we'll also consider installing solar photovoltaic systems at suitable landfills. We have reserved $1 billion to assist our policy bureaus and departments to implement small-scale RE projects. Now, uh, when it comes to um, climate change uh, by means of energy savings, and efficiency. Uh, buildings account for 9% of the power consumption in Hong Kong, and the uh, greenhouse gases they emit account for 60% of the total emissions here. So uh, f um, on the second front, I would like to talk about how we can alleviate climate change uh, by means of energy saving. We're gradually implementing uh, the Hong Kong uh, blueprint Hong Kong City Blueprint for Energy Saving 2015 to 2025 plus, and we have a measures of green buildings and energy saving measures. And I've got some examples for you. First, the government will take the lead. We will uh, achieve our 5% energy electricity saving target from 2015-16 to 2019-20. In five uh, physical years, we have already completed energy audits for 340 government buildings, and we have reserved $900 million for energy saving schemes. And uh, gradually, we are going to arrange for retro commissioning in major government buildings. And we encourage policy bureaus and departments to apply for green building uh, certification uh, BIM Plus in the buildings they manage. And the EMST has also added, introduced an ENM portal. Uh, it has um, innovation technology coordination platform so that startups and, uh, and enterprises can uh, apply for matching fund under the scheme for development of uh, green city and uh, in the community will provide tax in concessions. The capital expenditure for installing energy saving facilities uh, used to be deductible in five years. Now it can uh, be deducted in one year. And the new scheme of control agreements with the two power companies will enhance energy saving. We will support ritual commissioning and uh, of um, buildings and the two power companies plan to replace old mechanic um, meters with smart meters so as to collect data on consumption to further promote energy saving. Now, uh, we will also use a green transport to tackle climate change. Motor uh, transport is one of the major sources of pollutants in Hong Kong. Their carbon emission account for 16% of the total emissions in Hong Kong. So uh, on the third front, I would like to talk about how we can reduce carbon emission from transportation. We'll, we'll adopt a multi-pronged approach to encourage members of the public to use public transport, uh, to walk more often, and to create a bike-friendly bicycle. We will uh, support the industry to uh, use green clean fuel for commercial vehicles, and we will set up the already set up the pilot green transport fund to promote the industry to try out new and green transport technology and will well uh, reveal its scope of subsidy and will uh, promote the industry to use green transportation technology. And we've also funded uh, franchise bus companies to trial 36 single deck 
electric buses. And as for expansion of our railway network, with the implementation of RDS 2014, uh, railways will uh, have a market share of 40 to 50 percent of the total mileage travel in Hong Kong by 2031. And this will greatly reduce the need for road transportation. This is equivalent to a reduction of 143 thousand tons of greenhouse gases emission uh, from vehicles equivalent to 2% of the total um, emission. And as for emissions from uh, vehicles, we encourage uh, the uh, use of new energy vehicles. We hope that uh, we can um, have a newly registered uh, private vehicles to be new energy vehicles as a first step. After consultation of stakeholders, we will cease the first registration of uh, diesel private cars and we will consider uh, doing the same for diesel motorcycle. And we would, uh, by means of a waste treatment and a waste reduction, tackle uh, climate change. We are now uh, implementing the proposals under the um, Hong Kong um, blueprint for resource recycling. Last month, we introduced the Waste Disposal Municipal Solid Waste Charging Scheme Amendment Bill 2018 to the Council to provide the uh, legal basis for a municipal waste charging scheme and to provide fiscal incentive to change uh, habits and to reduce uh, waste at source. And uh, to encourage recycling, the uh, Recycling Fund Advisory Committee has launched a series of facilitating measures. Uh, procedures will be streamlined and then uh, the amount for uh, helping the industry to buy equipment will be raised. And then we have uh, expanded the list of eligible equipment for uh, subsidy. And then uh, we will also introduce a rent subsidy uh, for the industry. And then there will be uh, various um, uh, scheme uh, projects. And then we are gradually um, expanding our producer responsibility scheme. And uh, we have the plastic bag uh, charging scheme, the Wii scheme, a glass beverage um, bottle container, and also plastic bottle container scheme to promote a circular economy and turning uh, to turn waste to materials. Now, uh, to adapt to climate change, uh, we have done a lot in this regard. We have set up a climate change working group on infrastructure to coordinate the efforts of different bureaus and departments to enhance our ability to adapt to climate change. And we've also promoted smart and green buildings. For instance, the SWD has got this water intelligent network to uh, monitor uh, and uh, collect data of our water pipes so that uh, they can strategically and in a cost-effective manner maintain and improve our uh, water pipes. And the DSD has got a major drainage uh, system improvement project to gradually introduce the concept of a sponge city so that we can um, emulate the um, nature's water recycling system and promote the penetration, purification, and reuse of rainwater to reduce our runoff and enhance our ability to tackle floods. And as for improving uh, town planning, we'll have the two wars, 2030, um, planning, vision, and strategy transcending 2030 so that uh, we can have uh, various uh, ways to tackle climate change. Now, to tackle climate change, we have to enhance our ability to uh, adapt and uh, to cope with uh, climate change. We have got a Hong Kong contingency plan for um, natural disasters. We have uh, set up warning systems and also um, organization structure to tackle tropical cyclones and natural disasters. And um, we had the uh, super typhoon Mangat in last September, causing massive destruction, uh, resulting in a lot of waste and fallen trees. Unfortunately, no lives was lost. And after the typhoon, uh, the CE uh, commissioned the Secretary for Security to coordinate our uh, contingency work. A review will be conducted and expected to be completed by the next typhoon season. And green finance, uh, when it comes to uh, combating typhoon, climate change, we can also adopt green finance. The 
uh, the whole world is actively promoting a green economy and looking for projects to um, related to a low carbon emission and sustainable development to tackle climate change. And in June, we set up the Green Bond Grant Scheme to encourage green bond issuers to apply for green finance certification under the scheme to promote the development of green finance in Hong Kong. The government has uh, set up um, green fund grants scheme to uh, the value of 100 billion Hong Kong dollars to provide funding for green government public works. And on the aid front, uh, Hong Kong uh, is a member of the Kwangtung Hong Kong Joint Liaison Group on Combating Climate Change, and we have also actively participated in world efforts to tackle climate change. In 2011, uh, starting from 2011, Hong Kong has become a member of the G40 Steering Committee, and uh, we've also taken part in the UN Convention Framework Convention on Climate Change. Now, uh, the last level is how, in the long term, we have a strategy to lower carbon emission. To decode climate change in 2016, the government set up the Steering Committee on Climate Change chaired by the CS4A to coordinate and steer different government departments and bureaus on uh, action to tackle climate change. And in 2017, January, we published the Hong Kong Climate Action Plan 2030, setting out the government's uh, various objectives and measures to tackle this problem. Using the uh, carbon intense emission intensity in 2005 as the basis, we have already uh, formulated the objective of uh, lowering the carbon inten intensity by 65 to 70 percent by 2030, so as to comply with the Paris intention of of um, keeping temperature rise, average temperature rise in temperature, to no more than two degrees Celsius pre-industrial level, industrialization level, under the Paris Convention. All party states will uh, have to formulate a long-term development strategy by 2030. As a member of the country and a member of the international community, Hong Kong should, by 2020, formulate long-term carbon reduction strategies all the way to 2050. So uh, in this regard, the government has asked the Sustainable Development Commission to uh, carry out an exercise in the early part of 2019, and there will be a public engagement exercise so that everyone, uh, including uh, the community, will be invited to uh, chip in on how we can achieve the emission targets by 2050. Well, last year there was uh, the uh, Hato, and this year we have Man Mangat. These two super typhoons have caused a uh, uh, super surge in uh, in our coastal areas uh, and then there was um, affecting low-lying areas and uh, the water level will continue to rise because of the extreme weather and it is an urgent task that we tackle this problem. I look forward to cooperation with different sectors of the community so that we can move towards a low carbon uh, lifestyle. In April uh, this year, we have uh, launched uh, uh, a calculator, a uh, low carbon calculator. We provide tips uh, in, on our website so that we can uh, gradually uh, change our habits and move towards a low carbon lifestyle. Once again, I want to thank members who have spoken and uh, thank them uh, for their valuable views on this topic. Thank you. And I call upon Dr. Honorable Le Wai Kwok to move an amendment. President, I move that Honorable Martin Liu's motion be amended. I propose the question to you that the amendment moved by Dr. Honorable Le Wai Kwok be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Mr. Eddie Chu claims a division. The bill will be run for five minutes.
开始表决。Members, please begin to vote. Please check your vote. If there are no questions, voting ends, and the result is to be displayed. Members returned by FCs twenty five percent twenty three four one against. Members returned by GCs twenty five percent eighteen four five against two abstentions. The question has been agreed uh, by majority, respectively, of each of the two groups of members. There's those returned by FC and those returned by GC through direct elections for president. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Riley. Um, President, I move that in the event of further divisions being claimed at the meeting in respect of the fully transforming into a green and low carbon smart society and economy, proactively elevating and coping with global climate change. This council shall proceed forthwith to the division after the bell has been rung for one minute. I now propose the question to you that the motion moved by Sarili be passed. Those going in favor, hands up, please. Those against, hands up, please. I think the question is agreed by majority, respectively, of each of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the motion passed. I direct that in the event of further divisions being claimed at this meeting in respect of the trans fully transforming into a green and low carbon smart society and society and economy and proactively elevating coping with global climate change, this council shall proceed forthwith to the division after the bell has been rung for one minute. Honorable Hui Chifeng, as Dr. Honorable Lo Wai Kwok's amendment has been passed, you may move your revised amendment. President, I move that Honorable Martin Liu's motion as amended by Honorable Lo Wai Kwok be further amended by my revised amendment. And I propose the question to you that the revised amendment moved by Honorable Hui Chifeng be passed. And I now put the question to you as stated. Mr. Ted Hui claims a division. The division bell will be rung for one minute. Voting begins. Members, please check your vote. If there are no questions, voting ends. The result is to be displayed. Members returned by FCs 25 percent, 11 4 7 against 6 abstentions. Members returned by GCs 24 percent, 19 4 4 against 1 abstention. The question hasn't been agreed by majority, respectively, of each of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendment negatived. Honorable uh, Guo Wai Kang, as Dr. Honorable Lo Wai Kwok's amendment has been passed, you may now move your revised amendment. President, I move that Honorable Martin Liu's motion as amended by Dr. Honorable Lo Wai Kwok be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose the question to you that the revised amendment moved by Honorable Guo Wai Kang be passed. I now put a question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Mr. Gary Fan claims a division. The bell will be rung for one minute. Voting begins. <laughs> 
Please check your vote. If there are no questions, voting ends. The result is members returned by FCs 25 present, 19 for, 1 against, 4 abstentions. Members returned by GCs 24 present, 13 for, 6 against, 5 abstentions. The question has been agreed by majority respectively of each of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendment passed. Um, well, as members have already been informed as Bob Wei Kung's amendment has been passed, Dr. Honorable Kiki Kwok has withdrawn his amendment. Honorable Charles Mock, as the amendments of Dr. Lo Wei Kwok and Mr. Kwok Wei Kung have been passed, you may now move your revised amendment. Yes, President, I move that Honorable Martin Leo's motion as amended by Dr. Honorable Lo Wai Guok and, Doc and Honorable Guok Wai Kang be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose the question to you that the revised amendment moved by Honorable Charles Peter Mock be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. Mr. Aulok Kim claims a division. The division bell will be rung for one minute. Uh, Members, please turn your mobile phones to the vibration or silent mode because uh, from time to time we hear mobile phones ringing. Voting begins. Please check your votes. If uh, there are no problems, voting is closed. Members present, 25 present, 23 yes, one abstention. Member from GC's 24 present, 16 for, 3 against, 5 abstention. The question is agreed by majority respective of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Gary Fan has the amendments of Mr. Low Wai Kwok, Dr. K.K. Kwok, and uh, Mr. Charles Mock have been passed. You may now move your revised amendment. President, I move that the Honorable Martin Leo's motion as amended by Mr. Low Wai Kwok, Dr. K.K. Kwok, and Mr. Charles Mock be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose to question to you that the revised amendment moved by the Honorable Gary Fan be passed. I'll now put a question to you as stated. Mr. Griffin claims a division. The division bell will be rung for one minute. Voting begins. Please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are members from FCs 25 present, 6 for 17 against, 1 abstention. Members from GCs 24 present, 13 for 10 against, 1 abstention. The question is not agreed by majority respective each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment negatived. Mr. Chu Hai Dick, as the amendments of Mr. Long Wai Kwong, Mr. Kwok Wai Kung, and Mr. Charles Mock have been passed, you may move your revised amendment. President, I moved that 
Mr. Martineau's motion as amended by Mr. Lo Wai Kwok, Mr. Kwok Wai Kung, and Mr. Charles Mock be further amended by my revised amendment. I'd like to briefly explain why I uh, want to uh, move uh, my revised amendment. The crux of the matter is if we do not have a And uh, we do not uh, comply by the uh, new objectives moved by the UN uh, Convention in October this year, and that is uh, to lower the absolute um, reduction. Reduction of a carbon emission by uh, fifty percent. Now, currently, the SARG's target is thirty-six percent. Now, then we won't be able to uh, evade the disasters caused by climate change. If we do not uh, have this objective, then all the other strategies will be uh, illusionary and cannot really resolve the problem. And the reason why I want to move revised amendments is to uh, introduce a progressive tax on carbon emission. Um, Mr. Ju, you can only tell us uh, the uh, difference in wording. I didn't catch you. I know you often cannot uh, hear what I say, but I just want to say that you can only tell us uh, the um, um, how is your revised amendment different in terms of uh, the wordings. You cannot tell us the um, justifications. All right. I just want to say that we should start uh, studying the introduction of a progressive carbon tax. Well, if you disagree, it's still fine, but the administration should give us the justifications for its opposition. So members need not be too worried about uh, this proposal. And I hope uh, members can support my revised amendment because uh, of uh, the objective uh, in it. I now propose the question to you that the revised amendment moved by Mr. Eddie Ju as printed on the agenda be passed. Mr. Ju claims a division. Voting begins. Please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. Members from FC's 25 present, 6 for 7 against, 11 abstention. Members from GC's 24 present, 12 for 1 against, 11 abstentions. The question is now agreed by majority respective each of the two groups of members present that declared the amendment activated. Dr. Elizabeth Quart, as the amendments of Mr. Lo Wai Kwok, uh, Mr. Kwok Wai Kung, Mr. Charles Mock have been passed, we now move your revised amendment. President, I move that the Honorable Martineau's motion is amended uh, by Dr. Lo Wai Kwok, Mr. Kwok Wai Kung, and Mr. Charles Mock be further amended by my revised amendment. And I propose to question to you that the revised amendment moved by Dr. Elizabeth Quart be passed. Mr. Ho Chi Fong, uh, claims a division. The division bell will be wrong for one minute.
开始表。Voting begins. Please check votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. Members from GC FC's 25 present, 15 for 6 against, 3 abstentions. Members from GC's 24 present, 10 for 14 against, 0 abstention. The question is not agreed by a majority respective each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment negative. Mr. Kenneth Leung, as the amendments of uh, Dr. Law Wai Kwok, Mr. Kwok Wai Kung, and Mr. Charles Mock have been passed away, you, you may now move your revised amendment. President, I move that the Honorable Martin Neal's motion as amended by Dr. Law Wai Kwok, Mr. Kwok Wai Kung, and Mr. Charles Mock be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose a question to you that the revised amendment moved by the Honorable Kenneth Leung be passed. And I'll put a question to you as stated. Mr. Kenneth Leung claims a division. The division bell will be rung for one minute. Voting begins. Please check your vote. If there are no questions, voting ends. The result is to be displayed. Members returned by FC's 25 present, 23 for, 1 abstention. Members returned by GC's 24 present, 18 for, 6 abstentions. The question has been agreed by majority respectively of each of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendment passed. Honorable Martin Neal has already used up all his time, so the question is uh, that the motion moved by Honorable Martin Neal is amended by Mr. Le Wai Guo, Mr. Guo Wai Ke, Mr. Charles Mock, and Mr. Kenneth Leung be passed. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by majority respectively of each of the two groups of members who are present, I declare the motion as amended passed. Now, this is the last meeting in the year 2018. I hope you will all enjoy a happy holiday. I um, adjourn the meeting until 9th of January 2019 at 11 a.m. Thank you.